know. Neither do I. It's ridiculous. I assure you that I'm not implicated. Well, I don't know, but we'll find out, won't we, Speck? You bet we will, Artis. I don't know nothing. Me too. It means that you're under arrest, lady, on suspicion of the murder of Dr. Hugo Robin. These objects were found in the wreckage left by the explosion in which Dr. Robin met his death. Miss Loring, can you identify them? Yes, they were his. On January 18th, the doctor made a new will, naming you as sole heir. It's your contention, I understand, that you knew nothing of his will until after his murder. I object, Your Honor. The prosecution has not yet proved a murder charge. Objection sustained. Order. Order of the court. We just got to see the judge. How many times do I have to tell you? No kids are out. But you don't understand, officer. We have information relative to the case. Yeah, we know something awful important, too. Your boss up there will be awful mad if you don't let us tell him. I said beat it. Well, you're not very polite about it. You could at least say please. Please, please. If Officer Kennedy could arrange to keep the door closed, we'll proceed with the case. Can I get out, too? Can I, huh? Can I, huh? Please? No more questions. Your witness. Miss Loring, will you tell the court how long you and Dr. Robbins employed? About a year. And on the day in question, were you on duty as usual? Yes. I was in the office all day. I'm 
sorry. I, I guess I forgot. I was there for a few moments to, to leave some things to be repaired. If Your Honor, please. I ask that these children be held for questioning. Their memories seem a bit more accurate than the defendants. You may question the children as material witnesses at the proper time. Your Honor, we have put this witness on the ground. She's too young to testify. I am not. I'm five years old, but I'm six. Age is not the determining factor. It's a question of competency. Uh, come here a moment, my dear. Hello. Hello. Mr. Brown, the butcher has one just like this, only bigger. And he takes a big piece of meat and goes bang. <laughs> we'll talk about Mr. Brown later. Now, I want you to tell me the difference between right and wrong. You mean your mommy didn't ever teach you about it? <laughs> yes, uh, of course, but uh, you see, that was quite a long time ago. Now, I'd like very much to have you explain it to me. Well, let me think. There's the right to do with the pencil, but that's a different kind. And there was your right hand, and there's your right row, and that's right to mind growing up, and it's wrong not to be polite to people. And it's awful wrong to take things that don't belong to you. Now, do you understand? <laughs> All right. Now then, little lady. All right. Now, suppose you tell us just how clear you saw Miss Loring that day. Well, you see, it was like this. Me and Susie were playing. And all of a sudden, a bad dog grabbed her and bit a big hole on her side. It was awful. I thought Susie would die. So I took her to Dan. Cotton? Needle? Adhesive? Scissors. There. Will she get well, Dan? Can you fix her good as new? Can you, huh? Why do you think they call me Fixer, Dan? Susie's going to be all right. Not a thing to worry about. Who is that girl, Dan? Here, now put your finger here while I tie this ribbon. Makes a net earning of 30 cents for your first month in business. Gee, we'll be paying income tax in no time. <laughs> Ow! That's my sore toe. Did you see your doctors you promised me? Well, not yet, but I'll see them tomorrow for sure. We'll see to that foot today. I'm going up to Doc Robbins after a while, and you're going with me, young man. Sure glad I'm not you, Curly. That dark problem scares me. Me too. Dan! Dan! Dan, it's running. Your model works. Yes, does it? I've got it this time. It sounds like a million thousand bees. Does it make honey, Dad, does it? Of course not, silly. It makes Adam do stuff. But Dan, aren't all atomic bees dangerous? 
Definitely. In this small firing chamber, for instance, there's enough power to blow us all the kingdom come. That's why this room is out of bounds for you youngsters when I'm not here. If it blew up, Dan, would we just disappear like, like with atomic bombs? I'm afraid so, Spike, but don't you worry. I'm not going to let it blow us up. Now, suppose you all run along. Curly, you wait in the car. I'll be right out. Mommy, I thought you could get all about Dr. Robinson. Now, don't you worry, Curly. We won't let you go up to Doc Robinson alone. If Curly has to go, we all go. Not me. I wouldn't go up to that spooky house of Doc Robbins for a billion dollars. Not even a thousand. Don't be afraid, Steph. I'll take care of you. Honest, I will. I promise. And so we all along in Dan's station wagon. But the boys are awful scared riding in the front seat with an atom bomb. I beg your pardon, Your Honor. Arda doesn't understand. It wasn't an atom bomb, sir. Merely the firing chamber of Dan's atomic energy machine. Your Honor, I think perhaps this fixed Dan can tell us about it. He can't, though. He's gone away. He's gone away? Where? When did he go? I don't know. We haven't seen him since the day of the explosion. Your name? Beck. Yes, I see. I mean your legal name, please. Clients live in within John. Junior? I think we could understand you better if you took the gum out of your mouth. That's better. Now, were you present at the Fix It shop on the morning of Wednesday, July 10th? Let me think. Wednesday the 10th. I don't remember for sure. You see, I'm not very much good on dates. I always get them wrong in school. I get my best marks in poultry. Make it up myself. You want to hear one? Nature. Isn't nature a beautiful thing? The music in the air makes you sing. Back and forth go the huge trees and honey made by the bees. Blue as a water with pure white foam and mother's calling the young to come home. Nature did her job well and not even once did she fail. Give me that gum. <laughs> order, order. You want to hear another one? Bombs away. We're over Tokyo now. Another day. All right, boys, bombs away. Good work, boys. Another hit. I bet them Japs down there have an awful fit. Try it again. You're doing okay. All right, now, bombs away. The bomb hit with a burst of noise. Can't do the word. That's right. The two little boys. Oh, excuse me. With the court's permission, I'd like to excuse this witness and call him later. Order! Order! And what is your name? Curly. Yes, I should have. Your legal name. William Benson. Thank you, William. Now, will you tell us what happened at Dr. Robin's office that morning? You mean before or after he and Dan had the fight? <gasps> oh, so they had a fight. Ryan, go home. Please, Ryan, go home. I appeal to your honor. Please. Get that dog out of this courtroom. All right. Will you please tell the court? No. Oh. Order. In the interest of time, let the dog have his way. Suppose you start by telling us when you all left the shop. Well, like Arda said, we drove up to Doc Robbins' place in Dan's car. Just a dog or a bird. I hear Doc Robin keeps wild animals chained up in that big old house. Sorry, I wasn't expecting visitors. Hope you haven't been waiting long. Not long. Children, this is Miss Laurie. 
Good afternoon. Uh, do you suppose the doctor would have time for an emergency patient? I think so. Just a moment, I'll find out. That's the same girl. I'm sorry, he must have gone up to the house. He spends most of his time on research now. I'll call him. Yes? Would you give the doctor a message, please? Yes. I'll tell him. Doc's too busy. Can't we come back later or something? Now, don't be impatient. I'm sure he'll be down any minute. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Doctor. Do you mind taking a look at this young man? Come right in. Sulfur Thiazor. We'll fix that, Miss Loring. Would you see to the dressing, please? Yes, Doctor. <laughs> Are you successful, Cameron? I'm ready to go ahead of the full-scale machine. I've been needing more materials. Oh, yes, of course, of course. You shall have everything you need. However, I have a great deal at stake in this project. And if anything happened to you... I'd be left with nothing, absolutely nothing, to show for my investment. Oh, I realized that, Doctor. So I brought along the specifications and the firing chamber of the model itself. Uh, just a moment. I have an interest in this, too. We both know the term of destructive weapon. So I must have your guarantee that it'll be used only for the betterment of mankind, not its destruction. But surely, Cameron, you don't think we have any intention. We? Just whom do you mean by we, Doctor? Myself and my associates. Naturally, in a venture of this magnitude, I can't assume the entire financial risk. Strange. Our original understanding made no mention of associates. Just who are they, Doctor? I'm not at liberty to say at this time. However, you have my assurance. Your assurance? For what, Doctor? To sell humanity short? Oh, no. Before I'd let that happen, I'd smash my life's work into useless fragments. While men like you and your partners exist, the world can never know peace. Golly, that sure sounds mad. And I'll see to it that you'll never get your hands on these. Well, since you're being so high-handed, you force me to adopt the same measures. Either you leave me those papers or I keep this. Keep it and welcome. I can easily duplicate it. And it won't do you any good. I promise you that. Long distance, please. And Dan never said a word on the way back or anything. And when he made these threats to Dr. Robin's life... He didn't mean it that way. Why, Dan's the swellest guy in the world. He wouldn't kill anyone. I know he wouldn't. Your Honor, I demand that a warrant be issued for the arrest of this, this fix-it Dan. Somebody want me? It's Dan! 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 Dan!
quiet. I'm sorry, Your Honor, if my arrival created a disturbance, but it was apparently timely. From what I overheard, I, I'm a wanted man. You are a fix-it, Dan? Well, sir, that's my, uh, shall I say, local trademark for my repair shop. May I ask Your Honor why I'm wanted? For questioning in the state's case against Ann Loring. But, Your Honor, she's no more guilty of murder than, than those children. The charge is ridiculous. Frankly, I feel whoever disposed of Hugo Robin did the world a service. But it certainly wasn't Ann Loring. Most convincing. I trust you'll be as effective in your own defense. If the court please, I ask that this man be held in custody until formal charges can be brought against him. chamber didn't cause that explosion. If it had, it blown up not only the doctor's office, but half the town. Don't you see, sir? Without the firing chamber, we have no proof. After the testimony of those kids, we'd be lucky to settle for manslaughter. Chamber? Well, they... I mean, what are they doing there? Well, it's life imprisonment, at least, and it's all our fault. That lawyer guy said so. We just gotta do something. But what, Trini? Go look for that firing chamber. Dad left us in the duck's office that day, and... You mean, go near that house again? Dan's always helped us. Now he's in a jam. Are we gonna let him down? Of course not. Come on, Speck, let's go. Well, don't leave us. We can help, too. We've all got work to do. Come on. We got one, you Me, too. Back! Back! Where are 
doing here? It sure looks guilty to me. And he's definitely the criminal type. I bet you they are both in on murdering the dog.
up together and tell us what happened. Fellas, I... Gosh! It's the lawyer! He's dead. Murdered. You said he was a murderer. Did he murder himself, too? It's that nurse. I knew it. Searching the closet and suddenly the door slammed shut and locked. I remember getting dizzy and then everything blacked out. No wonder. Look at this. Well, the late Dr. Robin was still with us, I'd probably have come to as a guinea pig or something. Darling, don't kid about it. The very thought of the man makes me shudder. Come on, Ann, let's go.
Chamber. Answer me. Rex. What is it, boy? Your young pal's in trouble? Say, Professor, did Doc really experiment on wild animals up there, Professor? Uh, professor! Professor? Dog. Somebody took the squad car. Well, get the other car. Get the squad car. He's gone dead. <laughs> Are you murdered, Professor? He did not. Here's the firing chamber to prove it. We found it in the... Look out! It'll blow up! Don't be alarmed. It's perfectly harmless without the machine. As I've been trying to convince the police here ever since my arrest. And they wouldn't believe that I stayed on with Dr. Robbins just to watch him. He must have become suspicious and faked his own murder just to implicate the both of us. Yeah, and this explains that phone call to Chicago you told me about. To have himself shipped out as one of his own specimens. He's all yours, Inspector. Come on, Gargantua. The Chief wants to do a little research with you. 